Hey Internet. I had a little more time to work on this um, and despite getting distracted and uh, making a few errors and forgetting to actually reset my measurements um, and I actually did it on both sides so here I just didn't even set the y-axis on my mill and then over here um, I made a math error but I transferred it over here and then I had to redo these. Anyway, at least it's consistently messed up. Um, so I've got my gib, my gib in here. The next thing I want to do is um, uh, put a screw, retainer screw on this side and a retainer screw on this side. Um, if I hold this kind of firm, um, right now I've got quite a lot of friction and um, that friction is really from these two surfaces. And my plan all along was really to be able to shim uh, shim this up for for the contact with this top surface um, so you know it's pretty tight right now I've got the new taper in the vise uh, I've adjusted it uh, and um, I'm going to go ahead and put some twisting twisting forces on here so <laughs> It's pretty good now. I'm going to hold the taper because there's nothing else to hold it, but um, there's not a lot of friction on there. And you'll see that this uh, this indicator is moving around, but um, it's it's such a cheap indicator that you can see. I mean, obviously, it's not going to go in there anymore. Just w the wiggle of it is going to give about between one and two hundredths of an inch. So as it changes direction, that's just wiggling. But um, you know, if I make this kind of loose in here, so that's about one, what is that? It's about one, uh, one one hundredth of a millimeter. Um, you know, I mean, there's no friction in there. So if I add a little, if it's squeezing a little bit, which this, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this stuff is going to compress a little bit, that's pretty good. Um, and I just need to shim, shim, shim these surfaces off of each other. Um, the fact that I can move it's good because I only need a tiny bit of shimming. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, again, I'm just going to put these screws. And one thing I noticed though that's a bit of a problem. And again, remember, um, this is this is a uh, you can even see it in the light here. This is not flat material at all. Now I milled it flat. Um, but apparently there's a lot of stress in this stuff, and this is this is HDPE, and it's probably recycled. You can see the press marks here for however they made this thing. It looks like it's been sandwiched together from two pieces, but I think this is actually just a, a, a the mold um, parting line here, um, because you can see this is injection molded. Here's the release pin um, detail here. Uh, but regardless, I milled it flat, I swear, um, but um, as you can see, uh, well, maybe not there, but uh, it is not flat. Um, you know, which is okay. Uh, I can work around that. Uh, I need it to be, you know, fairly rigid, and, um, you know, I, I, I don't see myself, I mean... I don't think I can move it, but I have to do some tests. So I'm gonna, I can't really test it with this thing weighing around here. So I gotta retain that in there uh, to the right uh, thickness and then shim this up. And then I can, um, I'll mount the, I'll go ahead and mount the, uh, well, let me grab it real quick. I'll go ahead and mount the motor mount in here. Um, I may need to do a little bit of surgery. Uh, but I'll put the motor mount on there and um, and put the motor in there and then I can put it in the vise and actually twist it um, to simulate the force of the cutter. So, you know, overall I'm happy. I I, uh, I think it's working out and uh, I will continue to update folks on my journey of learning how to uh, how to create a box away. Thanks for watching.